a shout out and thank you to my teaching colleague just trying to make the best videos on the internet that explain the data not just transmit the information to you <laughs>
because that is really the massive in inhibition here, it's only one thing. So this is, it just depends on how much there is of this. So that's just SN1. That itself is stable. We call that an intermediate, not a transition state. The solvent here is a protic solvent because in this particular case, uh, it will do some interfering, but the most important thing is trying to get this stable so it actually occurs and so the reaction actually works. Well, if you're gonna talk about carbocation, positive induction is what we use to describe how these CH3 groups help support this positive. Now, if they were hydrogens, they would, they would have no interest in this being positive. And that would not help their bonds here. So the CH3 groups are much better at supporting the carbon being positive there. Let's go back to this SN1 reaction. So you will have here this carbocation forming, and then you may need to make sure you've done this here, this double arrow. That's key. I would add that as well, and definitely the positive needs to be there. You then must draw these electrons here attacking the carbocation. I would just play it safe and at the very end still show the chlorine product as well coming off. From the periodic table, you can see that fluorine is the most electronegative, and then it's chlorine, bromine, iodine. So the carbon bonds here, this would be more electronegative, this would be more electropositive. So you would expect that the nucleophilic attack here from you know, an electrophile would be able to be more effective and so that rate of reaction would inc would be greatest for, for the fluorines. However, if you look at the bonds here, you'll actually see that the carbon fluorine bond is actually the strongest and the fluorine and the halogen and alkane bonds actually get weaker down the periodic table. So that how that means that further down the periodic table, these bonds actually break easier. And so this has a more significant effect. So the rate actually increases as you go down, not as you go up the periodic table. Another effect to remember on the mechanism, tertiary is just SN1, primary is SN2, secondary can be both SN1 and SN2. Electrophilic addition reactions. We've covered this before, but this is high level now, so you need to know the mechanism. So the double arrow here and the double arrow here gives you heterolytic fission that then creates this carbocation and the nucleophile can then come in and react. Same story here. Just make sure you draw in the correct double arrows here. It's also good to write the, the dipoles here, positive and negative and the arrows here. You may be given a double bond in this sense here and you need to work out whether the hydrogen goes here or the hydrogen goes here. You need to remember positive induction here. So if you have a look here, again we said that the, the H pluses don't have really much as, as good an effect as stabilizing this carbocation as the side groups do. So if you look here, you'll find that the carbocation here with the positive induction would be much better than just here. So we've sort of reversed sort of the way to say this. And so the general rule, have a look and draw it out and see where the positive carbocation is to work out where it goes. And so basically the ones, the carbon with the most hydrogen gets the other hydrogen uh, is the basic rule. So if you have a look here, where's it gonna go? This one has the most hydrogens on it. So you're gonna put the hydrogen on here. And so you're gonna get two bromo uh, propane, propane rather than one bromopropane. Electrophilic substitution reactions now. Now you might not know that sulfuric acid is a stronger acid. The Ka is actually a thousand whereas the Ka for nitric acid is only 43. So what I like to do is I picture the sulfuric acid and the nitric acid and I look at the ability of the oxygens to hold on to the hydrogen. And if you look at the ratios you will see from this little clip that the ratios of the nitric acid is much better. So it has the greater ability to hold on to the hydrogen. So if uh, that's how you're going to remember when you put nitric acid and sulfuric acid together, it's actually going to be the nitric acid that's going to be able to grab on to the extra hydrogen. So here we see that sulfuric acid is lost out here and has taken the hydrogen uh, and nit the nitric acid has been able to grab the hydrogen. That's then created a, a stable compound, the water that pops off and here you have your nitronium ion. So here we have our electrophile. Once we have our electrophile, we can actually heat this up. This is actually a more stable bond, but the heat destabilizes the electron structure, and so that allows this nitrogen to come in and replace the hydrogen. Uh, and so that allows this nitronium ion to come in and replace the hydrogen. Reduction reactions now. 
Now to remember these particular catalysts that cause the reduction of these compounds here, I use the periodic table. So using the periodic table here, we know we're reducing them, so we need the hydrides, which is the H minus iron. And so we have here lithium aluminium hydride, which comes first. So that's used for the primary alcohols and then sodium boron hydride. So it's just a crossover here and that's one, they're one pluses and they're three pluses. So you would expect here that the hydride, there'd be four of them. So there we go, lithium aluminium hydride, with the four hydrogens. So that's how you remember the catalysts. Now this is primary, this is actually the stronger agent. This is the act, this is actually the stronger reducing agent and as we saw in the periodic table this comes first. So that's the primary al alcohols here uh, uh, that, that are worked on, created, and here we have the secondary. So you just work backwards from your oxidation of alcohols, put the hydride in there because you're not oxidizing, you're reducing, and I just showed you how to remember the catalysts. The syllabus was unclear about whether the mechanism needs to be known. And in truth, finding these questions on these sort of things, it's really getting quite obscure and it's really getting to the memorization stage. So if you have time, memorize these, otherwise I would leave them. If you see that this is created, uh, you can sometimes guess where it's coming from because you will need to uh, get a H2O off. And so how would you do that? It makes sense because this is quite a common grouping here and acids or bases are often used to catalyze. This here, um, I would probably memorize this one first before you memorize the second one. So how would you get that? If you were asked to get this, you would think, well, how am I gonna add the hydrogens? Um, I'll add some sort of acid. Uh, in this case, it happens to be hydrochloric acid and tin. So that goes into the memorization bank.